The Mirror. Chapter 2, Thursday, 13th May, Before Noon. The sky is childish baby blue and the sun shines sharply, not like a early morning. I am halfway with my back leaning toward the front door again, in the same position as I laid when I fell asleep for the first time, in the same shiny pink night dress I had yesterday, barefoot, and no warm clothes, but it doesn't seem to matter, it's too hot, to be morning. I has fallen a little bit down, from the front door with my legs spreading on each side. And my toes is stretched out. I finds that the mark from the rosy spike, is still on my shoulder. No keys, no wallet, and no mobile. I says sleepily and waving my toes. There is only one thing to do, namely, to look up the tree, of pure curiosity. My parents are coming home in two days. I thinking, and starts to freeze again, as if I had not frozen during my sleep. I take a big risk trying to get to school, sneak on the buses and then be at school, without normal clothes shoes, and bag. I decides to investigate the strange dream. If the guy who might also be a dream, I gets up, puts my feet on the asphalt and start walking away, towards the tree. I was so packed, so drunk. If this was not a dream, if my inner fantasies played me a prank, I'll find out before I call the police or something in that style. But then the necklace, was that a dream too? He must be able to help me out of this that thing is clear. The place with the tree, is just a block away, not so far away. I looks at the clock, 11.30 it is. But the strange thing is that nobody woke me up when they were going to work this morning because there are many who have to take this way out, and I have leaned my back to the front door since yesterday, and even stranger was that the dream felt so real. I gets up, puts my feet on the asphalt and start walking away towards the tree. It must have been a hot morning, because it is actually not so cold, to walk on this asphalt. I thinks when I walks towards the tree. I passes some grey high-rise buildings, I see a highway crossing my way to the little forest part. I stand by the highway to wait an opportunity to cross the road. I cross the road and find a walkway on the other side of the highway. So then it's only to find an old oak with a big hole in. On the walkway I encounter three brothers in completely white clothes, they have long beautiful hair and pointed ears. They talk softly to each other and look at me in my little dress. Suddenly, I get a feeling that they feel like laughing at my attire, my cute little pink short night dress. When the brothers have passed, I stops and looks into the trees, I start walking into the woods. But suddenly, but there is the tree. I walk towards the tree that is separate from the public and civilization. It's a big oak with a big black hole in itself. The oak tree is so big that the hole, can accommodate a whole man, I thinks, and the oak seems to lean a bit so the hole looks oblique. There is a little kitten in the bottom of the tree's hole, the kitten flies when it looks at me and an owl starts singing its song. I'm really surprised and put my hand into the dark hole, that's of course stop. After a moment of logical thinking from me, the three brothers walks towards me, I bring out the sparkling jewelry that hangs over my neck, and shows it to the brothers. The youngest brother gets a surprised locks upon his eyes. The protective dream pearl, is the words that appear in the minds of him. I have done that piece of jewelry. You can get really strange dreams of it, especially if you're drunk. I really do not hope you were drunk, when the protective dream pearl did its job, I suppose you want to meet Martinus? Where did my hangover go? That's right, I want- Which of them are you looking for? What? Does he have a twin brother? No, but to understand the breadth of it, you have to experience it. 
Now, I do not understand anything, at all. I can understand that. I can let the bright Martinus explain. The other Martinus has begun to stay, like at home. Says the brother, waving his hand against the hole in the oak, and he says some kind of gibberish, that is incomprehensible to me. You're welcome. Now you may enter. Explains the brother. While I gently insert one leg into the hole like a kitten, so my leg looks longer, he reacts with his nose when he looks at my butt from behind. The hole starts to suck me in, I disappear into the hole. Just like the gnomes, the fairies, and other astral beings does, when they go straight into a large rock, into a tree, or a large mushroom, and come to their astral world that is perceived as a physical plane, only when you are there, but is not physical to all in the material plane. On the other side, of the hole, is a giant large plot, with the most beautiful flowers you can imagine. Here are, all the colors, and flowers you can find, and impossible ones as well. The heavenly smells are so awesome, that the smells beats me in my face so I gets a blue thirst in my mind. If you're gonna joke about that, you can imagine, Donald Duck, who literally gets hit in his face of a fist-shaped smell and becomes dizzy. The sun is shining even sharper at this place, though it is really cold and rugged, as if the sun rays have difficulty to warming the ground, after a dark night. The sun rays make the flowers glitter in silver, I begins to walk around among the romantic sparkling flowers, like a giant magic botanical garden from a beautiful romantic dream plane. But this time she does not dream at all, it's actually for real. It's like trying to find right in a giant maze. I take a little closer look at the flowers, finds a yellow rose that is as big as my head, another flower is smaller. Most of the plants are apparently gigantic. I find a lot of flower species I never seen before, red blue bells, and blue lily of the valley, and more impossible ones. I begins to feel lucky as a little fairy. Finally I find a fountain, it sprays a bit of leaked water as if it were forgotten. As I stands next to the fountain, I discovers the light lilac colored house I dreamed of. The house looks bigger than it did in the dream and stands on a raised plateau. There is a way from the fountain to the house. I has followed that road from the beginning without notice it. I walks to the house. Outside the house is a patio, where you can sit, and have a coffee, a sunny day. There there are two guys talking to each other, both of them have similar clothes. The one guy has long bright hair and a green shirt of satin or if it is made of a huge flower petal. The other one has a bit shorter, redder hair and has a cold light blue satin shirt. Which could also have been made of a huge flower leaf. I finds a staircase among the discounts, and goes up the stairs. Once up there I sees that there are more stairs leading down to the greenery, the houses are like a road crossing. I looks toward the staircase leading to my right and detects a cement wall that grossly destroys the hedge that protects over there. The cement wall does not fully reach the hedge stop, the wall is really ugly comparison to the rest in the plot. The guys turns around towards me, that's the guy who gave me a piece of jewelry, he is probably Martinus, and the other guy reminds me of that nuisance, who tried to kill me yesterday. The red hairy guy gets stuck and looks surprised at me who gets a cold look back. But God, it is hard to strike the age of Martinus. Mikhail, do you know her? That's odd, so similar you look like a witch I met yesterday. Says Mikhail surprised to me, who gets cold eyes back. Mikhail, you should not mix it up. With those on the other side of the mirror, warns Martinus vigorously and waves with one finger in the air importantly, while I cannot stand here and be quiet, I picks up the silver jewelry, waving it in front of the eyes of the guys and says. Martinus? Have you been attacked by a bad assassin who was a little droll, which was a ring with a blue stone in? Huh? Since you two seem to have been met before, though not, I suggest we show Mina what treasure we have says Martin is smoothly happy, and I'm getting really pissed off on the these two, which I perceive as high-ranking, irresponsible, guys who seem to ignore what I say and they fantasies around in their fantasies. I cannot look like this, if I'm going to walk around. You owe me clothes and shoes. You there, Michael, you looks like that guy who tried to kill me yesterday, was it you? No no, not quite right, 
It's just almost. What almost? Was it you? I'll tell you, we'll show you the mirror for you. You will understand. There is no ordinary mirror we have found. And, I understand we owe you a lot now. Says Martinus to me and goes into the house. Now I discover what shoes these boys prefer. High black Dr. Martins with buckles on the side, back to or in other places. Like picked up a marvelous Halloween store for Satanists and heavy metal artists. The boots are on the outside of the pants with other words. But it is the same color on the laces of the boots, as on the shirt, which means they are no metal fans or true Satanists. I actually do not know what these are. Perhaps more like what people will be like, who have been to long time in the place where the gnomes, the fairies, and other astral beings with pointed ears live in. If people were to live in this enchanted environment, they must also be enchanted? Martinus has his buckles on the back of his boots. I become standing with my arms crossed and stares at Mikhail who throws his arms on the table and looks away. After a while, Martinus comes down with a light violet dress that is wide, and hot golden details, a blue jeans jacket under his arm and under the other arm he has a pair of black Dr. Martins boots with lilac ribbons and buckles on the side. I'm sorry that I don't own any pink little stretchable cheerleader skirt more fitting for you, but it's already occupied by a happier someone. Now go down to the flowers and put on this outside of your little skirt, get dressed some more clothes, says Martinus while he glances a little extra on my dress, and I think he notes how short it is. Next time you need clothes. I promise that there is such an elastic skirt available just to you. <laughs> We're just going to prepare ourselves, kind of thinking. Good, when I'm back, you two will come along and show me a mirror. Hope you have a good reason to show me a mirror. I says sourly, and goes down to the discounts. Mikhail is sitting in a thinking position, Martinus fingers majestic on his chin. Which looks a little bit goofy. We might as well attract the Vladimir gang. How do we attract them? Leave that to me I fix it. They would like to pop up if Minnow would dance the Cossack dance in her exquisite little, short pink shiny night dress. They would like to come up then. You have to conjure forth something, use some white art or black art, I know, conjure forth some flowers and trees on the highway, like, says Mikhail. Just when I'm going to wear the dress, I'm attacked by a flower who's trying to bite me in my ass. Angry like a bee, I glares at the guys. The dress ends down at my boots. Where is that cursed mirror, Martinus? I say angry. Martinus and Michael takes on some kind of long coats, which end just above the feet, so the boots gets half hidden, half calves hidden. The long coats are in a similar dark unclear color as the pants, and is wide below like a long dress. Martinus' long coat is made of jeans fabric, which is a normal fabric. Inside the coats there is a fabric that matches their shirts. Nichols has a cold red color on his lining to his icy sky blue satin shirt, and Martinus has a green color on his lining. These long coats are not winter coats. Come, says Martinus and begins to walk down to the gate that Minna came from. Mikhail and Minna comes along. It jumps out a giant toad in front of Minna. The toad has three eyes, it quackle very high, and jumps between the bushes on the other side of the road. A owl begins to hoo, and fly around in circles around the youngsters. We pass the fountain, and walk around the flowers, probably this road does not have the same focus as other roads. Probably other roads are used a lot more, whatever they are. We arrive at the gate, Martinus opens the gate, and when we cross the gate, I discover that we have the privilege of seeing the road and the houses outside, while out there you can only see a big oak. Talk about secretive. Like a strange place, between two complete different dimensions.